Hey everybody, I'm Stacy J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to another awesome episode of VO Buzz Weekly. And awesome is right. Yes. Holy Toledo. We have Maurice LaMarche on the show today. If you don't know who he is, you can quit the voiceover <laughs> business right now. Um, this guy is on everything. He is uh, the brain on Pinky and the Brain. He's on Ultimate Spider-Man. He's on Futurama. He's on everything, right? He's the voice of Lexus commercials. Too. And Lexus we are excited, and we you are. guys are going to be too. Yes. What do you Let's have for Let's do a viewer email. Viewer okay. email. Nice. This is from Charlene from Seattle. Hi, Charlene. Charlene writes, OMG, this is the best kind of buzz ever. You can still drive, and there's no hangover. You two put on such a great show. I only recently found out about your show, and it has been a fun and exciting marathon. I'm not in the VO business currently, but I've started studying acting and VO as a way to improve myself in various ways. I figure there's no better way to learn how to interact with people, among other skills, than from the very people that do it for a living. As a result, I found myself completely fascinated with the capability of the voice. I found VO Buzz Weekly while gathering information and have been completely hooked. I look forward to many more episodes filled with great tips and fantastic guests. Get down, Charlene. Thanks for finding us. Absolutely. And I got to say that, you know what? You're right. I agree with everything that you just said. <laughs> All right. There you go. Um, one thing I want to put out there is this. If you guys watch the show, anybody out there who watches the show on a regular basis and you're getting something good out of the show, remember this. On our website, VOBuzzWeekly.com, just in case you don't know where we're at, uh, <laughs> we have a support page. Go on there, read a little bit about you know what Stacy and I do, and learn how you can support the show and keep it going strong. All right? All right, it's time for the brain. Let's do it. To refer to our guest as a voice acting genius is no exaggeration. He is a force in film, television, and video games. Known and loved for his work on Pinky and the Brain, Futurama, Inspector Gadget, The Real Ghostbusters, the list goes on and on. We are beyond excited to get buzzed with the Annie and Emmy Award winning, brilliant Maurice LaMarche. Wow. Holy Toledo! Wow, I can't believe I'm here. Is this all true? How did you get me? Oh, I don't know. It's a credit list like that, I don't. I can't believe we, I, I we, actually showed up. I'm. I know we it's had your to actually. Ganger. It's actually not you. It's a hologram. <laughs> right. Of you. We right. had to go through many channels to get Mo to even return a phone call. Yeah. But not the Playboy channel. I, no. I, yeah. I, of I cut not. all that, that stuff next. out of my house <laughs> as soon as we had the baby. Welcome to VO Buzz Weekly, Thanks, man. Chuck. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. Wow, what a cool guy. So check this out, Mo. Uh, today, as my friends call yeah, me, exactly. He's uh, like only my friends call me Mo. If you're <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the so if you don't Mr. know, Mr. Lamarche, may I please? Would you please sign this yes, brain Monsieur, tattoo I have? Uh, Monsieur Lamarche. So when you sign, is it always Maurice? No, I yeah, I, I sign everything Maurice Lamarche. Yes, okay, yes. because that is his name. Yes, which is good for and you. And I sign my checks completely differently, so oh. so that nobody my, can like. Because my I've seen my my signature on the internet. You know, people scan. Oh wow! Things like oh yeah. So I start you know I started signing my checks a different way. So. That's wow. smart. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So. I don't sign anything the same way yeah. twice. It's really uh, weird. Yours looks like an EKG. And that's it's not like, blah, blah. that's not purposely. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, what? I have no motor control. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's no control, man. <laughs> exactly. uh, but anyway, so Mo was supposed to come over here today, and he's like, oh, hey, man, you know, I have to do this Lexus thing because Mo's the voice of Lexus as well. Mm -hmm. Nice car, by the way. Yeah. Um, I and have the, uh, I have the 2013 Lexus RX. Wow. There's no going. Back. Was that was that part of payment? <laughs> Is, um, that a, is that a gift or it's it's a it's this do they 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 want me in the in the company car they want me in the car that I uh, good endorse. choice and it's and so they 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 lease it for me and uh, it's a very nice thing so it's a very nice they yes. do beautiful spots. and that is by the way they are lovely. fabulous cars oh. they really yeah. are mm -hmm. they just really and bang for the buck I mean I don't bang. want to do a Lexus commercial here but yeah, yeah. but really you know the, the, I just that's it's the nicest car I've ever driven. It's, it's just great. So anyway, well, that's, that's beautiful. why in your reads it's so authentic because you truly because I believe in the yeah. product. Yeah, that's how that it really helps because <laughs> in, in in voiceover and in you know in on camera sometimes you've got to go and and you know read for stuff and or do a cartoon or whatever. Yeah. You're not really as into it, you know. And, yeah. And, you know, I, like for instance, I haven't had a drink in 24 years, but I have done in my career. Yeah. I've done beer commercials and mm -hmm. I've done uh, wine commercials. And you know, yeah, in those things you have to act, <laughs> you know, because I, like I said, I don't even I yeah, remember like, what a beer is. Yeah, muscle memory. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I, I just 
you know, so, but yeah, to get to, so you were saying about, yes, I had to do a Lexus spot today. So yeah, so he was doing a Lexus spot mm -hmm. today, and so he calls us up later on and says, oh, hey, um, listen, I need to go home and shave because yeah. I didn't know that this well, was yeah, a so video. I, wrote, so I said, this is audio a only, video, right? I thought audio it was only, podcast. right? I'm like, no, it's no. Audio. are you okay, freaking crazy? What is wrong with you? So he's like, I gotta stop home, man. I gotta like shave and look really oh, good. Looked, and I'm like, I looked well, horrible. I wasn't gonna call go like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but you see, were the thing so about, handsome, so people <laughs> need to see you. But I mean, I was stubbly and, and I had like cowlick. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about the voiceover world is, it's a great gig. It's a tremendous gig because if you if you have established yourself in it, uh, you will work. You know, once you sh prove that you're a guy who can show up and take direction, they 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 just want to keep working with the good ones. You know, mm -hmm. it's breaking in. That's the tough part. But it makes you. A little bit lazy about your whole physical thing, you know. So, yeah. Because I have done. Okay, I'll admit it. I was gonna admit grooming? it. Grooming? What's grooming? I read. I read for a cartoon show completely naked yesterday. You did not. I did. I went into my closet. Oh, I was gonna just say, did you do this at up, home or I set it up. Well, actually, my agency keeps the booths so uncooled. <laughs> The air conditioning just is not working. One of the booze that I actually threatened us. I'm going to take off my shirt if we don't get it on this thing. Because I'm dying in here. I'm not thinking about this copy. I'm thinking about how much I want to get out of this booze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and oddly enough, it was a refrigerator spot. Nice. I kid you nice. not. But yesterday, I was like, oh, man, I never sent in that thing. And I just come out of the shower, and it was like, I was supposed to send in this audition for a cartoon. And I just went, and I couldn't read in my robe. The robe was wet, and I just went, the heck with it cast off the robe and strode into my closet, <laughs> shut the door, clicked my Apogee mic yes. into my iPhone. Nice. Opened up Twisted Wave and just read, and then opened up my iPad and, 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 and read the copy. Completely in the buff. Nice. Wow. You so were the, uninhibited in a new way. Well, I mean, there was, there's no camera on me, so it doesn't matter. I mean, <laughs> That's I didn't, beautiful, I didn't man. think to myself, I'm naked while I read this. I just thought to myself, well, how do I read this copyright? Because basically, we're all naked. We just have a very thin layer of cloth in front of our. This nakedness. is true. This is true. We're naked under our clothes. Absolutely. We are. We're naked Let's right now. Celebrate that. Underneath our clothes. How many of you are naked watching us right now? <laughs> mm -hmm. Admit it. Yeah. Admit it, you <laughs> naked people. You. <laughs> Probably quite a few Probably of them. Quite. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and they're so, all doing this now. Oh, like, absolutely. Oh, Adam right and Eve. I have a question for you, dude. And uh, this is important because I actually wanted to know this. I was like, first of all, Stacy did a lot of research on you. She oh. knows more about you than you <laughs> probably know about you. Oh boy. Uh, when he he absolutely. Says that it makes People so comfortable. I know, but it's cool. Um, you so you you had a background in comedy originally, right? That yep. was your background. Yes. So I like to know how did you go from comedy to voiceover? How'd you make that transition? Well, um, you know, I had when I, when I was growing up, my mother actually I've never really talked about this. My uh, my mother had a good friend. His name was Nick Nikoloff, but his Nick, stage name was Nick Nichols. C H O L S, and he actually was one of those guys that would show up on on the Avengers every now and again. He, um, you know, the the old the old uh, Patrick McNee show. Anyway, he was like he was like the closest thing we had to a professional actor friend. This was Canada, and you know, show business was not everywhere as it is here. Yeah. And his big thing was voiceovers, and he remember him coming into to our house when he was when I was fifteen years old and talking to me about the, how, the, how voiceover was the greatest gig of all. Yeah. And. And I, rem I wanted to be a comedian. I'd just done the high school variety show, and I wanted to. I knew I wanted to do comedy. So voiceover was always in the back of my head, but it was never anything I was shooting for. It's always weird to me that it's that Zen thing of you know you go, you just go where it takes you. But mm -hmm. it's not like if I push too hard against it, it'll push back. Yeah. I did comedy. I was doing it at the comedy store, and you know my my dream was to do the Tonight Show, and. Funnily enough, because I pushed so hard on that, I actually pushed it away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I alienated the guy, Jim McCauley, I, and, and, and he never wanted to see me again because I just tried so hard. <laughs> I had every friend I had calling him. In the meantime, very quietly, this, this gal from the William Morris Agency, Nina Nissen Holtz, um, sees me and says, you know, with all the impressions you do, you could do voiceovers. And I was like, well, all right, okay. I just, I, I really want to do a night show with Johnny and make him fall off his chair laughing and get a sitcom and yeah. make a hundred thousand dollars a week. But I'll, 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 I'll do that too. Sure, that sounds like a good gig. And then Nick Nichols used to sit in my kitchen when I was fifteen, tell me how it was the greatest gig and all that. So I started going on these auditions, and it took me a year before I got my first job. And Frank Welker was a friend through stand up and through Howie Mandel, um, and he, you know, we 
we'd have these these volleyball nights. Only it was called volleyball. We'd <laughs> volleyball play it on, nights. We'd play it on the. Uh, we'd play it. It's it's volleyball, but you play it in a handball court. Anyway, he was saying the same thing, and he was talking me up around town. So I would walk into auditions at Hanna Barbera with Ginny McSwain and Gordon Hunt. Yeah. Oh, you're the guy Frank keeps telling us about. Because wow. Frank Welker is that guy who yeah. will. You know, almost give a job away. He doesn't need the work. He yeah. recommends people. He recommends his friends for jobs. So I got my first voiceover job. And it was when I finally sat down in the chair that I went, this really is the greatest gig in show business. I mean, I just, you sit there, you read the copy. I was my first real gig was with Don Adams mm -hmm. doing Inspector Gadget. And there's, there's Maxwell Smart, you know, <laughs> three seats away from me. And he's doing, come on, Penny, we're going to defeat Dr. Claw. And that, uh, oh, I messed up the line. Oh, sorry, Marsha. And then, you know, Marsha Goodman, our director. Yeah. So they, in those days, they had to do tape. So it was not as, you know, instant. Yeah, and, not as yeah, and they had to readjust mm -hmm. things. So while they were resetting, Don would stop and go, you know, I'll never forget the time that Rickles and I were chained to a wall on the set of Get Smart. <laughs> and they left us there for lunch because we blew all the takes laughing in the morning. They left us chained up, came back from lunch, we were still laughing. And I got the entire, like, DVD box set commentary of Maxwell Smart. Wow. I got it in 1985 doing, doing you know, uh, Inspector Gadget with Don. I went, this is the coolest job in show business. Yeah. Nick Nichols was right. Mm -hmm. That's so you know, cool. You don't even have to memorize. You don't have to find key light. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, worry about upstage, downstage, right. sit in makeup. You just act. It's really pure. Yeah. So that gradually began, you know, I began gaining momentum in that. And that's how that's how it happened. It was really not it was really not a thing where where I I, I tried, you know, we, you know, with claw marks in it, you know, mm. climbing some kind of yeah. voiceover, you know, mountain. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll show up for that and just, you know, and, and I didn't want to embarrass my agent, so I'd do my best. Yeah. But you know, I was busy messing up a whole other career and getting myself <laughs> <laughs> getting myself in voiceover <laughs> on the side. So that's why whenever anybody asks me how do I get into voiceover, yeah. I said I can't only I can't tell you my story. Because my story is go fail at being a stand-up comedian and piss and a lot of people off, but show up for voiceover auditions. And yeah, exactly. And then yeah. somebody yeah. will say, hey, you might be good for this. Right. So, Maurice, we've had people sitting where you are saying, you know, we all know that... Did you clean the chair? Of course. Yes, All right, good. Did. did you put down special, like, that plastic padding? We yeah. Did. We, we got, yeah, we got some very germophobic, cleaner. except... <laughs> All parts of my body, germaphobic. Nothing can enter me. Oh, you have me, a little I mean. something right there. Oh, no. Oh, um, I got sterilized. My oil okay, me in alcohol. We all know that the sound of your voice is not enough to make it in the business. He's going, it isn't. Sound of my voice is. Like, no, yes. <laughs> but but the, there's is. more to it than just, oh, I have a cool voice, right? So if there's someone out there watching um, who's in the business or who's trying to get in, do you have any any insights or wisdom to give them about what what else do you think it takes to be in the business today and be successful well persistence and perseverance uh, first of all like I, as I said uh, I, I mean I read I auditioned for a year a full year before I got a job for my first job and I never allowed myself to get uh, you know before you got one job before I got my first job it was one year of auditioning Wow <clears throat> now do you remember? Were you auditioning weekly, monthly? I would daily? say well, no, not 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 necessarily weekly, but maybe maybe biweekly, maybe a couple okay. times a month. I would go okay. into uh, uh, the Morris office and read in the, in the you know in the little closet. Yeah, there. and um, you know, and 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 Nina never gave up on me, and and I didn't give up. But I also had another thing to do. You know, I mean, I was mm -hmm. again focusing on that stand-up career. Right. Um, so, but, but, but definitely don't, you know, it's going to take a while to get your first job. And it isn't just about having a nice voice. It's about being able to pick up a piece of copy and, and, and read it as though you're just thinking of these words as you go. So read a lot. Reading a lot is, is, is tremendous. Just, you know, read in your private life. Read aloud. Um, take an acting class. I mean, it's really about acting. I always say this. Voiceover acting is... I. <laughs> I was doing a show called Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys. <laughs> and what an, it, it, it's a show that never got its due. It was very cleverly written by Gordon Bressack, who uh, was won three Emmys for writing Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain. And he created this show, and it was about these, these genetically um, enhanced uh, uh, m monkeys. They, they were enhanced by, by an, an, 
a being out in space. Mm -hmm. and, and but the cast of this crew of monkeys that have a, have an enterprise like uh, ship was people like Jerry Doyle from from uh, Babylon Five, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Dorn, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then there was Dom Herrera and Jeff Bennett, and Malcolm McDowell was on the show as a regular. Wow. Um, it was really this interesting mishmash of these many of these different worlds, um, and and one point, Michael was so taken with the stuff that Jeff Bennett and I could do because we yeah. were playing multiple characters. He goes, "Wow, you guys are just like real actors." Oh. <laughs> I looked at wah, Michael and, and I said, and I, it was the, 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 I think it was like the, the Star Trek 7, just, the generation had just come out, and I just looked yeah. at him and I said, If you were any other man, I would kill you where you stand. <laughs> and I said, Michael, this, we, are all, we, we are actors. We just, we're just doing pure acting here. We're not worrying about all the other mm -hmm. you know, stuff that is a valid, of course, is a valid part of stage acting and film acting, but we're still acting. This is radio plays with pictures, you know? Yeah. So it is acting, and so take acting classes, take improv classes, and, um, you know, and, 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 and stretch yourself. It's not just about having a nice voice. Yeah. No, it's about connecting with the copy and connecting with the listener. Yeah. You know, Harv Kalmanson has a piece mm. of direction that he gives mm -hmm. to everybody. It's always the same piece of direction because it's the most valid piece of direction you can give. Talk to one person. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever you read for, especially if you're doing spokes work, spokesman work, sure. talk to one person. Don't think about talking to millions of people. Yeah. Right. Think about talking to one person. And, and I, you know, when I do my, my car commercials, I am telling be my best, okay. This <laughs> segment is I don't want to be too endorsing. Yeah. You know, I don't want to take yeah. over. It's like the, come the, on, man. the commercial, Let's the, be proud. the voice, the this voice is, is, is the commercial. Yeah. I don't, yeah, but I, I don't want it to, to, you know, to, 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 to steer towards it, me. I mean, how many people know it's John Hamm doing Mercedes? You know, it's, it's, it's his voice that's the star in that right. setting. Right. Uh, same with Chris Pine. From, mm -hmm. uh, from yeah, he's the new Captain Kirk mm -hmm. in the Star Trek movies. He's the voice of BMW. People don't know that. Right. So, because <clears throat> the voice is the star in those commercials. And they're all imitating me right now. Anyway. That must feel good, though, that, you know, people so, are um, copying. Luckily, none of them, <laughs> either of them are going to watch people this. People are stealing your sound yeah, and your chops. I, 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 let me just say that people are saying that to me. Isn't I don't think so. But there are people coming up and saying, you know, John Hamp's doing you right now? Yeah. Like, really? He's, He's like, what? He needs that? He's Don Draper, for crying out loud. Every woman in America is, <laughs> is, is just, you know, wanting to be with him, and he needs to do my reads. That's fine. <laughs> Well, when you're hot, so, you're hot. Well, so, hold on. How, what, what is this Lexus guy? Who, what does he sound like? The Lexus guy is just me talking to my best friend about the best car I've ever heard about. That's all it is. That's it. So it's I very just, relatable. I, and I, and I, I, actually, I actually picture that person sitting in the chair on the other side of the glass in the corner, and I just talk to them and say, the 2013 Lexus GS, there's no going back. And that's it. It's just honest. I'm telling them about this great car. And, you know, I, I mean, what, obviously when you're doing an animated thing, you have to create another reality yeah. and connect with somebody else. Yeah. And with Pinky and the Brain, you know, we never did a Pinky and the Brain without each other in the room because mm -hmm. it was very much about Rob's and my relationship. Yeah. So we always, you know, if one of us got sick, we put off the, the thing that week because there was just so much. It wasn't necessarily timing. We probably could have pulled it off. Yeah. But there was just so many lovely nuances that came from the relationship. Exactly. So, and that's really you know, what acting is, is creating relationships. People want to watch relationships. Yeah. When you write, you write the relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Okay, so let me ask you this. Um, no, I won't allow it. <laughs> you, you have to you allow it. You may not, I will not let you it's ask me this. Over now. I'll let you, ask, let you ask me that. I will ask you this. that, but not this. Oh. So. Okay, so you were talking about you know auditioning in the beginning. You auditioned right. for a whole year before yes. you got your first job. Wow. Okay. Um, I sucked. Yeah. Oh, now you guys can oh. say if he and can then do I it. I was good. Yeah. And then he was. <laughs> um, you had sprinkled. With obviously, or uh, well, maybe not. Do you still audition today? Uh, every 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 day. Okay. Beautiful. I go. So, and I, I still read. Listen, everybody reads. Um, in voiceover, they can't cast you unless they know your sound. Mm -hmm. I remember walking into. Uh, you know, I I went. From William Morris to ICM in 1999. Yeah. At ICM, you know, you, you you stood a good chance of walking through the lobby and seeing, you know, major major stars. Right. Anyway, I I walk in and it's normally just people are you know chatting. <laughs> Danny Mann is hey he ha who ha you know just you know yeah. he's always got a, 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 a 
quick with a joke, it'll light up your smoke. And I walk in and it's like a mausoleum. It's full, but everybody's just sitting around like this. And I walk in and go, did, did, we, did, did we lose a client? Did somebody die? And I go, well, what's going on? And Danny, who's normally, you know, that, that party guy, just goes, sit down. Just wait. So I sit down and I just wait. The door opens up and a business, woman in a business suit comes out and goes, thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you so much. And Jeff, Jeff Dana is like, lovely, it was a wonderful job, wonderful, thank you. And who is he shaking hands with but Sir Ben Kingsley? Oh. No. He, Ben Kingsley had to audition. <laughs> nice! <laughs> ben Kingsley had to audition for a voiceover job. Okay. Everybody yeah. reads. Everybody reads. They've got to make sure you sound, your sound yeah. cuts through. So, yeah. No, no, did I he saw, get it? I think I went and did no, a Ben, King, ben imitating Kingsley imitating afterward, and ben they Kingsley. went, you'll work for Scar... No. <laughs> yeah. No, I did. I'm sure he did. <laughs> yeah. You're actually good. We'll take you. Uh, I mean, it was they were reading Ben Kingsley. Yeah. And they, they didn't give us all a shot at it afterwards. They were. That's fantastic. But I'm glad you said that because a lot of people will will say, you know, and write us and say, oh, when you're at your level, Jeff I, I is get that all the time. I mean, yeah. yes, I'm sure you're. You still sure, audition? Yes, yeah. Yes, of course I audition. Yeah. Yeah. Naked. Yeah, naked. Exactly. See, Just but, yesterday. Yeah, exactly. You couldn't it, do that 20 years exactly. ago. Now you're like... Well, he could, but he would have gotten arrested. Now you can even go into the studios and, naked right. and audition. Yeah, and that's right. okay. exactly. You have to get to a certain... There's a law against law. that. Uh, wh what is your process between a commercial, you know, uh, analyzing a commercial copy and figuring out what read you're going to give or, or, or an animation audition? Well, as I said, in, in the commercial case, I always try to, you know, as, if it's spokesy, it's talk to one person. Yeah. I mean, if you're in a scene where it's like a husband wife, you know, having coffee in the morning kind of thing, obviously you, you have a relationship with the actor playing your wife, you know. Right. Cartoon, um, it's a, it's, for me, it's another thing. It's a little more psychotic. I try to inhabit the character. It always, it always helps me if there's a, a, a model sheet of the character mm -hmm. there. And I just kind of like picture that as like a costume I climb up inside, you know. And, <laughs> That's and, good. And, and, and adopt the attitude. Like if I do brain, I can't do brain without doing this. Come, Pinky, back to the lab to plan for tomorrow night. We shall take over the world. You know, it's like, I can't not do Brain's face. Right. Even though it doesn't matter, they're, they're going to draw Brain's face. They yeah. don't need me to do yeah, Brain's yeah, yeah, yeah. face. But I do what I, my, my conception of what it feels like to be inside Brain's head. Right, right, right. So I try to climb up inside their heads, as it were. That's, that's, that's pretty my neat. Approach. Putting on the costume. Figure out what a character wants is also very important as an actor. That's true what's too. the want in this scene? What's the want? What's his ever? What's his through line? What's his always want? Pinky's was always wanting to help. Brains was always wanting to not have Pinky help and to take over the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when yeah. you're doing Futurama, because you've got Kiff Croker, you've got yeah. Tarkulon, you've got multiple roles. Mm -hmm. Do you normally record those one at a time all the way through with the script, or are you switching back? We and forth? are switching. Billy West does it. I do mm -hmm. it. When we've got multiple characters to do, characters to do, we just read it through like a radio play. Wow. Nice. You know, and it's, and it's, you know, I love the way David X. Cohen directs us because he does take chunks of the script. Good two and three pages runs that are scenes. We actually mark them scene one, scene two, scene mm -hmm. three, scene four. And, you know, it usually doesn't change until there's a scene break and act, you know, where, where the action changes to another area. Yeah. So we're playing thoughts all the way through. That's nice. I don't really hold with going all the way through, uh, you know, a script in one character and then because I like to react to myself. Mm. I can do that sort of split thing. I, you know, yeah. Billy's the best at it. If you come to a Futurama recording session and <laughs> yeah. watch Billy play the professor and Zoidberg and yeah. Fry, three yeah. main characters who are in the central family of the show, and he's got, you know, three, he's got half of them. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's Hermes and Amy and Leela. And okay, so that's, yeah. that's Phil Lamar, uh, 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 Lauren Tom, and, and Katie Seagal, and then Billy West is the other three. Oh, and sorry, and then and then of course John DiMaggio is Bender. Right. You know, right. so there's seven people all hanging out in that break room, which is the sort of the home of the show. Mm -hmm. But Billy's like half the people. There's some imitations that you do, or impersonations, mm -hmm. I, I will say, yes. that are supposed to be stellar. Supposed to be. <laughs> okay. They're supposed so, to be. I've been. Word on the but wait a minute. I'm supposed to be. I, I've been able to get them quite I, up to par. I do but. the same ones that you do. Uh -huh. Oh boy, it's okay. an impersonation. So, so I wanted to have a little contest with you to see who does it better. Well, as I'm, I'll tell you, I'm I'll tell totally you this. kidding. As long I'm totally as it's kidding. not going to be, as long as it's not Peter Falk, because we can't do a Falk off. 
Oh, fuck off. No, no, we can't because this is a clean family exactly show. Exactly right. So we can't have that. No, I'm totally kidding, man. But uh, can you do for us like maybe your top three that you feel like maybe these are these are really really good because I I suck at all of them. <laughs> <laughs> my top three. I don't. I, I well, you know, I. I uh, my very first impression, I don't know if it's the top, my very first impression first. was was Peter Falk. Okay. Mm. So this is my own Falk off with myself. <laughs> okay. Sir, I'm sorry to bother you. This is, this is very embarrassing. Do you know where I can get a pair of shoes that look like that for about $20? I can't afford those, but my wife, she's just tired of these, and she wants me to get something new with. <laughs> kind of spiffy. By the way, sir, the knife... They found your prints all over it. That's, That's so, so good. Bad. I saw that episode. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was every episode. Asked, that was every he episode. He asked about shoes in every yeah. episode. Yeah. And the yeah. Man, that yeah. is scary. So that was your first one, right? That was the very first impression I ever did. Now, is that when you actually discovered you could do that? Yeah, I was about 14. Hmm. You were 14 years about old 14 and you years discovered, old. wow, I yeah. could do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's fabulous. What was your second? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Actually, it was Tony Curtis. I, uh, the, the second one I did, His the persuaded you. I know. Yeah. You. you became and him. I, beca I became Tony Curtis at 14. Wow. I loved the show, The Persuaders, with Roger Moore. And uh, he was marvelous before he was James Bond. So, <laughs> wow. That wow. was my next impression. That's wow. so yeah. cool, man. Yeah. Wells didn't come to me until much later on in life. Yes, now, Wells so has to be pretty hard, you man. You know what? It was, it was actually, it was, it was um, uh, Phil Proctor. Phil Th Proctor... On New Year's Eve of 1984, gave me a tape. We were stuck in this recording session until about 11, so my New Year's Eve was almost ruined. But he, he gave, gave you a tape. He or gave a me tip? A, a tape. A tape. He said, "Here, this will cheer you up." I had missed my flight to New York. I was actually <laughs> going to fly out to New York. <laughs> Needed some. I was cheering supposed up. to catch the the, the three o'clock flight. This was supposed to be a quick recording session in the morning. It ended up being we were dubbing a French puppet show. Mm. From 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. It was horrible. Whoa, that's and a so, Pro I mean, all of us kind of got our New Year's Eve messed up. But Proctor, you know, knew that I had the hardest because I was supposed to jet off to New York and hang out with uh, with at the MTV New Year's Eve party. Yeah. yeah. So um, he, he gives me this tape of Orson Welles doing the outtake thing, the uh, the frozen peas commercial, and I listened to that in my car for about five years, just wow. backwards and forwards, and so I learned the get me a jury and show me how you can say in July and so I learned that whole thing and, and that was that became the basis for an entire career Wow! because I get without me learning the, the Wells thing that that rant I never would have gotten brain and wow. brain brain took me to another level well that's all we got for part one with our buddy Mo we'll be back next week with part two and it is going to be insane yes it is but between now and then, keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, you guys, at Leo Buzz Weekly. Take care until next time, and just remember, you, you always have time for a little buzz. buzz.